Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Lighting Your Sunshine, where we like to shine a light within and empower ourselves. So today, as I was driving home from work, they were like, guides came in so loud and clear, and they're like, let's make a video. So we're doing it. So I have no insights on what it's going to be about. Oh. But we'll find out what the story is. So these ones do have reversals built into it and they are all mixed up really well. So the first thing that I do see is um, some deep, deep soul growth and healing going on in this reading. Um, a lot of reversals. In fact, there's only one card that is upright and the one that is upright is the victim. It says prevent, okay, so the light attribute, right? Because there is always something good and bad to both sides. Everything has duality. So the good, it says, prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. Its shadow attribute would be playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity, inability to maintain personal boundaries. So we're not having a pity party here. But as I do look at this, it does look like it's been a tough road. And so I want to read that one more time. Whoop. Prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. What stands out the most from that is victimizing others. So when, you know, when something happens to you, it's really easy to want to lash out and retaliate. And so for those who don't act like that, which hopefully is majority of the population, um, that takes huge strength, right? Reacting is so easy, especially when you want to get revenge, right? That's your emotions taking over your body and you don't actually have control. There's no control. And so let's see what else we've got. Um, we did have the child card there are a couple child cards in here and I'm getting really huge chills right now. Oh, I'm feeling it kind of creep up in my back and it's kind of going towards my heart. I'm feeling very sad, actually. I'm feeling like a little kid just being sad. Like in this scene that I see, I see like you dropped your ice cream cone, your dog ran away, all these things, right? Um, that are devastating to a kid, right? Because they're just in the moment enjoying it. But for the child card that we've got here, it's the magical one. It was in reverse. So the shadow attribute of the magical child is pessimism, depression, and disbeliefs in miracles. Believing that energy and action are not required for growth. And that's... That's sad. That's a sad story. The end. Um, depression they want to talk about. In the wheel of like emotions, right? When you let your emotions go and they're healthy and they're flowing, um, depression is like one, one emotion twice removed, if that makes sense. So when something like anger or agitation or something like that, sadness does come to us, um, it's teaching us something. It's, it's a very healthy emotion when we deal with it. But the more and more that you get mad at yourself for feeling that emotion, uh, adding shame to it. So it's taking the emotion and then adding shame to it and blending that. That's where um, depression and anxiety comes from. It's like that one emotion 
and then going once more even deeper into depth. So that's why depression can be very tricky because not only do you have to energetically get that energy and momentum back, um, they're saying patterns and routines are very um, helpful at the beginning because sometimes you don't have a routine, right? Especially with depression, you just, you let everything go, right? You're just like, I don't have the time or the effort or the energy for that. And this card said, believing that energy and action are not required for growth. So what they're showing is to make a list of things to do and they're saying in the morning, very first things you wake up, five things to do. Um, because usually we're lazy, we go on our phone, right? We do whatever. And they're saying, when you make these five things and you do it every morning, at least when you wake up, it's almost, it's going to become autopilot. Like let's say it's drink hot water in the morning. Well, very first thing without even thinking, because sometimes our brain just ain't ready to think, but you'll already find yourself at the coffee pot, turning it on. They're saying, Preparing even the night before will be benefit in the morning. And so in both scenarios, it doesn't matter when you do it, but it's always in the best interest to do it now, right? Um, when we have depression, we tend to push it off till later. You know, I'll deal with that tomorrow. Procrastination is, you know, very entwined with, with it. But if you have the mentality, of, you know, I'm going to prep things tonight, you know, I'll save myself time in the future. It's that always thinking about helping yourself in the future. These tiny actions that I take now are going to help me in the future. And so make them achievable. Don't make it something so crazy wild outside your comfort zone or skill level to where you get frustrated and quit and give up. Yeah. So the next one that we got was also in reverse because they're all in reverse now, but it is the hero. And the shadow aspect of the hero card is escapism and a false sense of heroism. That kind of reminds me of yesterday's reading where it was that person giving, 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 giving. And in it, um, they focus on everyone else's goals. You know, I come in and I help you and I save you, but the effort's always on them, them, them. But they're not taking care of their needs, right? Because in this magical child, it said depression. And here we've got the victim card, which we're not having a pity party, but sometimes we it's hard. Right? We're so adamant on being like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Fine. That's the word they say. We don't like the word fine. Don't, don't use it in your vocabulary. I wonder why. They're just saying it's such a very neutral word. There's just others that have so much more um, depth and creativity and, and power to get you out of that and they're saying you really need to be authentic and communicate communicate your needs so they're saying when it comes comes to this false sense of hero that it's like you've got things that you really need to focus on you need to go within and you need to deal with that crap but there will always be something that will need your time outside of yourself and so there is a point where you gotta find out where your line is. Where is your line? It feels so good to help others, but it also feels good to know that our own backyard is clean and taken care of, right? The grass isn't greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. The next card coming up is healer. Healer in reverse. Shadow aspects are taking advantage of those who need help, failing to care for oneself. They're telling me 
who heals the healer? And when I think of that, well, I say, well, the healer heals the healer. But if the healer is always out focusing on helping others, there needs to be an equal exchange. Doesn't need to be money all the time, but that is a resource, an energetic resource. As long as you're getting back and your cup is, you know, as long as you have room for filling up and emptying, right? You wanna be balanced and flexible and in the flow with, with life. Then the last one we've got for these set of cards is the student in reverse. So the shadow attribute of that is arrogance in the pursuit of destructive knowledge, unwilling, unwillingness to translate knowledge into action. You know what to do, you do, right? I, I see like this is like a person who reads tons of self-help books, that's what they're showing me. They're always reading and reading and reading and they know what to do, but they'll never take action to do it. And, and that's what they're showing me is you can create this fantasy world in your head, you know, and, and the more you read and the more you only do it in your head, you can think you're doing the work. But that's escapism because you really need to be grounded in your body and you have to deal with things. Like they're showing me how I'm not able to go, well, I've been trying, but I really hate going to really crowded places like Costco or the shopping mall, right? Raging empath. And so if you know you're an empath and you know that you have to be around people do the work. <laughs> That's what they're saying. There's so many like, right? Put yourself in your protective bubble every day. Are you meditating? Are you eating well? Are you getting enough sleep? Right? Are you having your spiritual baths and your Epsom salts and your everything? Are you, are you going out and connecting with your friends or, or are you choosing the destructive path? And by that, it just means going out and partying and you know, not having a, a sleep schedule, kind of throwing your body through all these like woo -woo -woo, twists and turns. And so your nervous system is always like trying to keep up, but it doesn't really know what's going on. Are you doing the work? They're telling me to read the student one, one more time. Arrogance in the pursuit of destructive knowledge. Unwillingness to translate knowledge into action. So this one said, I'm willing to translate knowledge into action. This one says, pessimism, depression, and disbelief in miracles, believing that energy and action are not required for growth. They're showing me two scenarios someone who you know isn't quite awakened to all that magic in life has um and so they don't do the work because they've never really experienced that before and so for them it's hard to believe in miracles because to them it is what it is and so right you gotta struggle to make ends meet because that's the way life is meant to be that's not the way life is meant to be. It never was, never will be, but we learn so much from it when we get trapped in that matrix-like type thinking. Um, the second scenario I see is somebody who is educated, but they don't think they have to do the work anymore. They've, they've, you know, think that they've reached a master level. And I'm gonna let you know that you'll never really truly be a master. You will forever be learning. So I, I see someone kind of thinking like, oh, I'm better, I've done the work, I don't need to do that. And uh, that's a slippery slope. <laughs> that's gonna, you know, that's a, that's a little bit ego-based. And they're saying, read it one more time. Why one more time? Arrogance. That's what they're saying. No, they're telling me to read the light attribute. 
So the student in its positive light attribute is humility and devotion to knowledge, openness to lifelong learning. They're showing me, you know, for your energy, maintaining it, right? Having enough uh, flexibility and flow. Like I said, when a problem comes, can you amp up the energy? Uh, when something else happens, can you slow it down and go into chill vibe mode? Right, having that flexibility within. And they're saying that's your journey. Your journey is to learn balance. And in order to have balance, you have to do the work every single day. Every single day you wake up, you say, you know what, I'm gonna have a good day. I'm gonna do my best. And whatever goal you set for yourself, like you kind of need to have something like that every day. Anything else to touch up on this right now? They say in both situations, for the person who thinks that they know everything so they don't have to do the work because it just is natural. It's the effort, it's the movement, it's whatever you put your energy into. And so for the other person who doesn't see the magic and the miracle in things and doesn't put the effort because they don't believe it, right? Seeing is believing. both of them are stuck and stagnant they're like two sides of the same coin they're telling me and and really you know what these cards are really giving me a false healer vibe that's someone who who pretends like they've done the inner work, who, you know, they, they read the books, they repeat the same things, right? They know the right words, you know, love and light and things like that. But, but they're just like a walking dictionary of other people's words. They, they haven't really quite gone in and done their healing experience because they're so focused on healing you. They can see what's wrong with you, but they haven't done the work themselves. It's like, I took a class, so now I know everything. That kind of attitude. They're telling me to go to the healer card and the healer card attribute, okay, they said, read the shadow, then read the light. So shadow is taking advantage of those who need help, failing to care, care for oneself. In a healthy, positive aspect for the healer, it is passion to serve others by repairing the body, mind, and spirit. The ability to help and transform pain into healing. Taking advantage of others. Stuck out. All they're showing me right now is just a bunch of certificates on a wall. And they're telling me that because somebody has tons of certifications doesn't mean that they actually are healers. It just shows that they had a lot of money to pay for a piece of paper. So if you, I don't, I don't really like talking about this. I don't wanna tell people that they're not doing what they said they're doing. Can I have one more clarification? Because I feel like I feel like this all wraps up. This is a false healer. This is someone. Oh my gosh, guys, you I can't make this crap up. So I was like, I really need one more because like I I don't want to poo-poo on other people and tell you not to go talk to other spiritual practitioners, right? Use discernment. Use discernment always. But what this is giving me, I was like, show me one more to wrap this all up because that's the vibe I'm getting. But what's the real story you want to tell me? 
and and I got mentor in reverse. So there is a false mentor out there who who's not doing the he healing work. So if they're not healing themselves, they're not really going to help you. It's going to keep you stuck in a pattern of relying on them. So we're going to use cards as an example, right? Um, for my friends who get readings from me, usually they only have to come like once a year or once a whatever lifetime change. If you've got someone who makes you dependent on always coming back to them, you should get enough information the first time or whatever it is that you're working on to, to have answers to seek and find them yourself. And in other aspects, when it comes into energetic healing and work, yes, there may be some like repetitive series that you go, but you should be finding um, elevation. So the mentor in reverse says the inability to allow the student to move on to the top. I read that wrong. The inability to allow the student to move on to the role of master imparting false information. That's very interesting because as they showed me, that piece of paper on a wall doesn't mean that you've actually went out and mastered those skills. Those who, who are real true healers, they've been thrown into the fire. They had to resurrect themselves from the act. Oh, I get what the card I pulled on the community board today was. It was all about resurrection. Damn, I got mad chills. Oh, I've been getting chills all readings lately. They're coming in so intense. Okay, resurrection, your teacher not wanting you to go past them, wanting to be... Well, that's a false, that's a false idol. That's a f ego. They got false ego going on. It's like you, sh you know, even in a sense, um, withholding information. That's what it said. Imparting false instructions. They say it's good to have multiple teachers. Don't rely on someone to get all your resources from. You can honor the path, but always know that there are multiple, um, multiple solutions, multiple ways to learn and do things. A lot of those healers or mentors out there, they, they've had to go through their own journey and that's how they came up with some of their information. But be careful for those who try to imprint or, uh, is imprint the right word? Project, that's the right word. To project their, their fears and beliefs and things like that onto you. But what concerns me is this K. So we got student in reverse, and then we've got being stuck and not doing any action required for growth, being stuck in this false escape hero's journey, right? It's almost like they give you 90% of the story, but the 10% is the thing that keeps like, I'm seeing, that's why in this time, right? I was doing my readings every single day, but Spirit's like, you don't need to do five five every week, right? Because I was always like stressing and rushing to go do it. They're like, that 10%, right? 90% is all textbook and theory or whatever. But the 10%, the thing that actually takes you from being the student and bypassing the master or teacher is mentor. Yeah, because it didn't call them a master. It didn't. They were just a mentor or a teacher. And so I'm picking up on some jealousy of people just owning and tuning into their own authentic gifts. 
there really is enough for everyone to step into their power, which is funny because I have a feeling that that's what this person preaches as well, but they, they only give enough information to keep you dependent on still coming back to them. And, and they don't want you to go above and beyond. So how do we get out of this? Well, the one positive thing out of all of this was the victim. You're not a victim, right? You came into this relationship with this mentor open and you were like, you know, I would love to learn from you, right? This is something very exciting and a little bit outside my wheel well. You can get as much information, right? But always, always go within and connect to your higher self before you... That way you can discern whatever message they, they give. If it don't feel right, it's not. It's not for you. But sometimes things can be said to us that trigger us. That's a different thing. So you have to find out what that is to you. So we got three more cards and this is, I see it as seeing through this illusion because it's an illusion that's kept us trapped. Because what I don't get, this is a silly reading, I think, right? We're not a victim because we're out there and we're trying to do the work or the healing or the something. Well, we came into this mentor that um, doesn't really have the best, like, yeah, they love when you give them praise and energy and attention and you stoke their ego and you pay their bills and things like that. But they don't really like when you are equal or excel above. And so they don't give you the full picture of what they know. And they know what I, ooh, that makes me mad. It's not even a thing of you being better or knowing more, but by them holding that information back, it's a disservice to the world. Because that person, if you had helped them with that information, this is for the mentor. They could have went out and helped so many others. It could have been, it's not about you. And it's not, it, it, as a teacher or a mentor, it's never about you. You have to remember that, right? So we got, we're not a victim, but we're looking for help, right? We're trying to see the magical things in life. And so uh, we're on this hero's journey, but nothing is moving. It's almost like stalled and stuck. I see just enough information being fed and given to think that you're on this epic magic hero's journey child-like thing that you're doing all this inner work and healing right you're learning you're learning but it actually was not good energy something we need to bust free of i want one more thing on this mentor Their energy is thick. So as I pulled this, oh, I, I, uh, I wish I didn't try to feel the energy of this mentor, but they feel thick. They, it's like this black, dark, thick energy that kind of chokes you. And it's, it's like, sludge or oil or something like that so if you pick up on that energy around someone connect to your higher self and be like am i seeing this clearly yeah that's why you have to do the work you have to do all this soul growth and things like that the meditation those kind of things because then you know how you feel and then when you go out in the world and you do come up with someone with this thick energy, um, you know that it's not you because you already checked yourself. So what I thought was, as I was like, show me this, this energy. I was like, pick up on them. I want to throw up. I think they're gross, gross energy. But they came out as the rescuer in reverse. It says, 
assume, assumes that all the rescued will reciprocate, keep the rescue one needy. Yeah, like, come here. I know exactly what to do. Yeah, like, and it's like love bombing at the beginning. It's like, yo, you, you need help. Oh, you poor thing. Like, come in, come in. You're part of the community. You're part of the tribe. But remember, they don't want you to go past them. They don't want you to evolve and teach them something. No, I'm supposed to teach you. But you'll learn from everyone all the time. And when everyone steps into their power, do you know how much this world, this world needs it and you'll be able to help on such a massive scale. Imagine turning on the news and not seeing such horrific things because everybody stepped up into their power and, you know, led with heart, not with ego. All right, so it's getting long. What a weird reading. Watch out for those false mentors who never want to see you spiritually bypass them. So, as I said, these cards, what did I say earlier? These cards are kind of like seeing through the situation, you know, helping yourself, awakening, gaining that momentum, that kind of stuff. So the first card out is forgiveness. If you know who this is that has tried to um, play you for a fool, use you as a cash cow, as a, you know, worship, they're energy vampires. 100%. They need you to sustain them. They need you to give them energy. But they're not actually healing. They're not doing any work within them. They just take and take and they talk out this spiritual... Some... Some know, some know all the work, but they will never give you the thing that will really help you. So what do you need? You need forgiveness. You need, who do we need to forgive? It was spirituality and spiritual partnership and pride. There was a lot of purple. That was purple on purple on purple, which is all the crown. Each one of those talked about your guides. Um, whatever you did that you think broke or severed your connection to source is not true. You are always divinely guided and very well protected. And so that forgiveness is whatever event kind of snapped you off from thinking you were connected to that and feeling like that lost, lost magical child. Pessimism, depression, disbelief in miracles. That's so sad when you stop believing in miracles. And so the next one to come out is individuality. You got to follow your own path. You got to follow your own calling. Um, that's why they said have a couple mentors, um, you know, bounce things off them, see things from people's perspective. But the main one is for you to bounce it off yourself and your guides. If you really want to hear and feel and heal and go on this magical journey and, you know, climb that mountain and conquer it and all these things, you got to become the student. And the best teacher is your guides. Then you take what your guides say and then you can talk to others and, you know, share stories and mend and blend. But you have to go out and experience. They're saying action. We need to move. We need to build that momentum, which is very, very hard when you're in depression. So if you do find that you've been on this spiritual journey and you're just not getting anywhere and it just seems like everything just keeps, you know, here's the next card, which was personal growth, which is what I was just saying. So I felt the need to share that. Everything just keeps backfiring. And you know, it's like one step forward, three steps back. Um, and you are reaching out and you do have a spiritual advisor, but you're not making progress. 
that's when things need to change. You need, as this one said, believing that energy and action are not required for growth. And then the other one said, unwillingness to translate the knowledge into action. And then the last one, inability for student to move on. You gotta build it, you gotta move. It's like, you know, they're showing me now relationships with parents. There is a point where you do have to leave the nest. You do have to go out there and make your own decisions. And if you crash and burn, you'll learn way more than if you were ever, you know, if you had a helicopter parent and they didn't ever let you get a bruise or, you know, play on the playground and test out your strength. They're telling me, right? Most baby birds, butterflies, all that. Um, they just gotta, they just gotta take that leap and trust in their own wings to take them to higher places. Okay, spirit. Okay, spirit's coming in more. So there is something more. They're showing me, they said open arms. Um, they wanna give you praise and like commend you for opening up to someone and saying, I need help. That's the, the biggest step you could have ever made. But what they want now is if you're talking to someone and question them, don't believe everything for as fact. And if they get so frustrated for you ever trying to understand things, right? obviously don't like berate them be like mar, mar. but huh that's curious why is that and if they get mad at you for asking questions that's a red flag they're saying go off on your own learning path go and explore and do things that you feel called to They're showing me a book and they're saying, yes, there's lots of information in this book, but maybe only one chapter is meant for you. And that's all you need to focus on, right? That's, that's the missing piece that you need, but you don't need to memorize everything. You will intuitively be drawn to the right place when you need it. And some things you just don't need. Don't, don't bog yourself down with all this useless information, keep it light, keep it fun. They say do five things. If, if you are battling this depression, this heaviness, this fog, they're saying five things, write down five things that you can do in the morning that, and it's like, do that every day. And now it's a habit. You didn't even think. All you knew is you were sitting down, you had your tea, you had your book, like it just, everything was there. They said, we didn't read the light at, at tribute for the rescuer. In a healthy relationship, um, a rescuer is someone who provides strength and support to others in crisis, acts out of love with no expectation of reward. That also kind of goes with yesterday's reading as well, with that person not quite giving selflessly, right? They gave and gave and gave, but deep down they were expecting something back and when they didn't get things back it was detrimental to them they were like it just seemed like a hissy fit almost spirit is there anything else that we need to clarify on this
somebody has a mentor who's teaching them, but you're not meant to go down that path. You're actually meant to do something much, much more. And so by focusing all your time and resources, and I'm not saying don't go out and listen to people, but for who this message is for, um, you kind of intuitively know it's not right. You've kind of gotten the messages, but you just don't want to listen to them or know them. Um, you know, whoever this message is for, you know. Yeah, I see that you're a very curious person. And so Spirit's just saying to look outside the box. I feel like you are being contained in a box. And in this box, it seems like there's lots of room. But really, you're just trapped now in a spiritual box, right? A lot of us, we're in our boxes and we break out and we have all these new insights, but really all we did was just put ourselves in this new spiritual box, which is, you know, labeling, putting a label on something. So spirit really wants you to take off that label and, and just be raw for a bit. You are meant to be outside that box. You're meant to go above and beyond that. Your teacher is only giving you a portion and the most important stuff is outside that box for some it's like a tragedy that you have to go through in order for you to gain the life skills and lessons and so when something does happen it's it's facing it with eager not eager just ready, just being ready and prepared. Anything else, Spirit? Yeah, I'm just seeing. Unhealthy. Um. It's like, what am I even trying to say here? I'm seeing just unhealthy patterns when it comes to you needing to rescue people or be rescued. Codependency. That comes up a lot. Thrive on the power of passing on private or secret information. Betraying confidences. It was gossip energy. I don't know who this is, but whatever, whatever group you're in, I feel like you think that you're a part of this community, but they don't like you. They do, but they talk so much crap behind your back. And, and you have this inkling or you kind of have this knowing. Um, they just don't want you to evolve or exceed past whatever level that they have for you. Spirit's like, give it to us and we'll burn these bridges. <laughs> And once I, once they said that, like, I just felt like this relief or this heaviness. Cause like I said, whoever this mentor is that I'm picking up on their energy makes me want to throw up. It's like this thick, gross, ugh. And so they can come off as very grounded. Maybe they, I'm seeing them pretend to be very, mm. But really, it's just thick and heavy and toxic. Come, They come off as grounded and peaceful, but there's something to it that's just not right. You feel like they're looking down their nose at you a little bit, or, you know, you see like a smirk or something like that. It's 
Spirit, I don't like this reading. I don't like it at all. I didn't like yesterday's either. But those are the messages coming out. And I'm seeing sadness. When you do find out, like, like they said, whoever this is, like, you do know. You do know that this, this... It could be a community or a mentor or whatever. They just don't want you to go past them. So if you're not being pushed to go past your limit, to think outside the box, they're saying to what's that saying? If you're the smartest person in the room, then you need to go to a different room. And that's what they're kind of saying is you need a different mentor. If your mentor is not helping you anymore and you're staying the same all the time, even if it's just like little, like I feel like they feed you just enough to think that you're doing work. But if you're not really seeing the soul growth and the soul evolution, then that's not your mentor. And, and you know what? I had a couple mentors. I had quite a few. And Spirit made me walk away from every single one of them. Because you need to connect to your guides. That's your best. That's your best mentor. And then you come to these people as equals, not on a student teacher type level. Which is interesting enough because I just shared my I Ching card pull today. And I said, my friend taught me this. But in that interaction, right, she was teaching me about which, which yin and yang um, and how it kind of works and stuff. But I was teaching her as well. So that's the conclusion. Finally, 47 freaking minutes in. And I finally got to the conclusion. I feel confident at ending this video now with this piece of advice. Usually when you look up to someone as a teacher mentor role, they're not gonna share everything with you. If you meet someone who does that, who actually helps you go above and beyond them, awesome, right? Like that's how I see like coaches who coach the Olympics, right? They no longer can do that sport. So it's all in their power and interest to help you be the best you can be. That's an amazing mentor. But for that person who doesn't want you to ever spiritually bypass them, because that's what I'm picking up is this has something to do with spirituality and healing and empowering yourself. You need to connect to your guides first. You need to empower yourself. And for those who are like, I'm so new at this, like I don't even know what I'm doing. Trust me, you know so much. And when you start to wake up, as you unlearn everything, you're gonna find out that as a child, you intuitively knew everything. And then you're gonna take those skills and then build on them. So you've already got it within you. And every time I meet someone who doesn't know anything, like I love teaching them a couple basics and they're like, whoa. And then they start teaching me things. It's crazy. So they're showing me you go out, you do your thing, you connect to your guides, and then when you come to this mentor or whoever you want to create and exchange with, you need to see yourself as equal. That you have something to share and that they have something to share. We need this balance, this equality. Because in that way, when you do, you know, keep learning and keep growing, like they can't, they can't get mad at you because like you're, it's, that's the momentum. This person helps this, 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 this. If it's not like this, and it only stays, I know everything, that's ego, that's false. Be an equal, share everything that you have within you. And keep some to yourself, you know, save in your pocket for a rainy day. All right. I'm going to leave it there and I hope you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Stay in power. <laughs>